thank you, Toby, for agreeing to this interview. And uh, I was intrigued by your poster title. So, you know, why don't you, uh, can, can you tell us a little about it and how you got involved in it? I got an MD and an MBA because I was really intrigued about the changing pace in healthcare right now. And there's a huge focus on value-based healthcare. So I was thinking, well, what exactly is value-based healthcare? And how can I apply this to the field that I would like to go into, which was dermatology? So I took a couple of classes and I came across um, this um, theory about how to uh, d differentiate cost versus actual uh, spending in medicine. So for so long, we've all known that the cost of a, of a me medical pr procedure is what you're reimbursed, which is actually not true. The cost of a medical procedure is truly the cost of the medical procedure. Um, for example, if you were to um, buy a piece of uh, jewelry, the cost usually re reflects the cost of the ma materials involved and the cost of the time that it took for someone to be able to carve whatever it was. But for, so for some reason in healthcare, we got it distorted that the cost became the reimbursement, what someone decided the value was, not exactly what truly the materials and the time it took to do the me medical service was. So in the context of trying to improve value-based healthcare, we uh, d decided to actually try to apply those principles that are used in every other industry. And the reason why this is important is because now we're going to start thinking about what is the best value. And if you think about the best value, value is truly the outcomes um, over the costs. So the better the outcome, the better the value, the lower the cost, the better the value. So if you can figure out that you're getting the same outcome doing a procedure with a, with a lower cost, then that's a higher value <laughs> or a better outcome. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So we decided to try this out on a very common uh, pr procedure. They're reimbursed the exact same if you do it on the body. of. So we thought, well, could there be a way to be able to say one is of higher value if the clinical situation was truly indifferent, that you could use either shape of punch biopsies, because there are cases that you do need to use one versus the other. So uh, we use this technique, which is called time-driven activity-based costing, which uh, takes the materials involved and it takes the time used by every single person involved in that uh, procedure. So with this, we were able to come up with, uh, with a cost of shave and punch biopsies. So once we had the, the two different um, costs, we took the difference and then we were able to say that punch biopsies do cost more than shave biopsies. And so and where, are, where is the cost contained in the difference of those two procedures? What's the biggest, uh, the biggest cost on either end? That was the second major question we had. So we wanted to know what are the cost drivers? Um, and what we found was that the physician's time is a major cost driver as well as the materials that are involved. So with punch biopsies, you um, do use more, more materials. You, um, you have to um, suture, you have to actually do the punch biopsy itself, and um, it takes more time actually suturing rather than uh, uh, just closing the wound without any sort of um, other hemostatic process takes much more time. So that's why um, we think that punch biopsies cost more. Um, and this also tells us that if you, if the aftercare process and the f physician's time is much more intensive in punch biopsies, then maybe we need to actually take a step back and look at the entire um, uh, entire cost. So your your poster looked just at the upfront costs, yes. And the and the ratio of costs from sh between shave and punch was how much? It's in the upper 70s, and um, for um, shave biopsies, the cost is about uh, 58 dollars uh -huh. right now. Yeah. Um, so the upfront costs are more, and then in in the future, uh, mm -hmm. additional data that you hope to maybe look at is yes. what is the the af the cost of the after. The the cost of the aftercare. So, yeah. Exactly. So including the cost of aftercare um, from the patient's standpoint and also the doctor's standpoint because they may get more calls, for example, for follow-up or bleeding complications or other complications. So looking at um, the overall cost of care and then trying to assess eventually if the outcomes are, are different. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. then comparing that, so comparing yeah. the entire cost of care with the outcomes to see if, um, yeah. if there's truly a higher value.